Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from Your Destiny. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we'll be talking about gun balance. Now a quick disclaimer, this is all going to be going off the beta balancing, which when you think about it is some of the most unreliable data you could possibly have. But some of it does align with what has come before in the previous game, so I'm going to draw some conclusions that experienced players might find obvious, but they're important to discuss nevertheless. First off let's deal with the biggest elephant in the room. Hand cannons, specifically on PC, seem to be the kings of the crucible meta for most engagements, with pulses being the top dog for ranged fights. Experienced guardians will hear that and be like, and? Well the reason I bring this up is because Liam, who had limited exposure to the first game, was kind of shocked at how average the rest of the gun options were. That's important because newer players might find the skill shots being the top of the meta very punishing. I have to admit, I'm fine with it. As a principle, I like that skill and precision is rewarded if you have the mechanics to access those advantages. But let's take a look at a few weapon types and unpack why they lag behind so much, and whether there is anything that can be done to make them more competitive. First up, Assault rifles. ARs have typically been weak in Destiny. There's never been much of a reason to use them, even in the console aim assist environment. The Soros regime was admittedly king for a while, but that was a very long time ago and it fired so slow it was basically an auto-firing scout anyway. The problem with ARs is that in most games, being a jack of all trades is good, because having a weapon that is useful at most ranges was an advantage, where the weapon type shone was in its dexterity. This is not true in Destiny 2, and there's actually a deep a reason for that. Range dictates weapon effectiveness, so in turn, map design is the biggest influence on what weapon becomes the most suitable. To prove that, let's compare the two maps that we've got to play in the beta periods for Destiny 2. Endless Veil vale for the console and Javelin 4 for PC. Obviously I'm only talking about the quick play options here. Now cast your minds back to Endless Veil. Vale. Essentially the map engagements were either long lanes or very close up, so pulse rifles became the primary of choice with hand cannons or SMGs being the backup. Javelin 4 was much more medium range, plus it was on PC, so hand cannons dominated. Now medium range is where you'd most expect an AR to be viable, but they weren't. Their time to kill was simply too slow compared to what was possible with a hand cannon. So at the very range the weapon should excel, it floundered, leaving it with no characteristic that would make it an attractive choice. It wasn't just ARs though. Think about scouts, sidearms and SMGs. Four out of the six options were essentially worthless and I'll explain why. Let's talk about scouts first. By definition, they will always be a ranged option, so the map didn't suit them, fine. But scouts were outperformed by pulses, even in the ranges they were supposed to be good, and why was that? Well this has something to do with the PC platform in particular. Scouts are only really accurate when aimed down sight. The pulses were equally effective when fired like that, but you could also use them from the hip to more effect than a scout. You wouldn't want to use a pulse like that in an ideal scenario, but particularly the Nurgle pulse, which is an auto burst, could be surprisingly effective as a last resort from the hip at close range. And that's the dexterity advantage that I was talking about that should be present in an AR. Pulses represent a better option than both an AR and a scout because they do both of those weapons jobs better. Having to ADS is a disadvantage on PC particularly. One, it slows down your reaction time from seeing an enemy to outputting damage. For example, hand cannons had no such delay. See someone, reticle on them, shoot from the hip like we're playing Counter-Strike and Bob's your uncle. Much, much faster. But ADSing also has another disadvantage. Hit flinch. Both the Sunshot Hunter Exotic and the Better Devil's Hand Cannon would make your screen shake while aimed down sight if you got hit. That could be enough to settle a duel. Not only that, but your character also slows down their movement speed while aimed in, making them an easier target to hit. Scouts were too limited and too unresponsive to be viable against good players. Now let's talk about SMGs and sidearms, which suffer the same fate but for different reasons. SMGs have a very limited range in which they are a genuine threat. Sidearms didn't seem to be good at anything, outputting way too little damage even up close to be an option. Now having a weapon class that's lethal at a very particular range is fine in principle, but here's the thing, when talking about close range, especially in Destiny, weapons have to compete with melee, which despite its nerfs is still incredible. Why use an SMG or sidearm when you could just hit two body shot hand cannon shots from the hip on mouse and keyboard and then just melee? You wouldn't, hand cannons are just too good at everything if you can hit the shots. They, like pulses, become more 
dexterous than the other options if you have the sufficient skill. Now the question becomes, what do Bungie do about this? Do they make the other weapons better? Would we even want an AR to actually be sick? Would they not just become the dominant archetype if you could reasonably beat a hand cannon player of equal skill? And that's the issue really. We can't actually have the utopian world where everything is equal. We have to make a choice. Personally, I prefer a world where the skill shot, more punishing weapons are at the top. If you miss with a hand cannon or pulse burst, you massively extend your time to kill. That's the niche that a full auto spray weapon like an AR should be able to exploit. But in a 4v4 environment, it doesn't make much sense to pick a weapon based off the principle of other players being bad. 4v4 is way too hardcore for that. You can't gamble on others missing. Instead, you have to gamble on your own skill winning out. In a game like COD, which is chaotic and engagements happen at many different ranges no matter the map, a player can utilize a very specific playstyle to limit their exposure and perform well with a niche weapon. Take a shotgun, for example. In a COD game, you can navigate a map to only get in close up engagements and have fun. Destiny 2 isn't like that. It's way, way, way more hardcore, so everyone ends up having to use the best stuff to compete. What weapons cover the most bases? Pulses, hand cannons, and melee. And that's the world we live in. But is that a bad world? I don't think so. And with the game out in less than a week, we don't have long to find out if they've radically changed everything. We don't even know how good the beta weapons were comparatively to other weapons in the same class. There could be a Mida. Please, Bungie, please let there be a Mida. Or a regime class AR that makes everything else look rubbish. That's the joy of it, the joy of discovery. I was always looking for a Crucible Dark Horse, a weapon that was a sleeper monster in Destiny 1. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this issue. There's bound to be some strong feelings flying around, as there always is. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating. If you never want to miss another video of ours again, please click the bell icon next to the subscribe button on our channel to join the notification squad. You'll be in good company. And finally, please check out our Twitter. It's where you can find updates about new videos and other cool stuff. I've been Eddie the Chump, and until next time, 